Hey now, Brawlers! Today we are taking a look at Forsaken Lore, the first but most definitely not the last expansion for Eldritch Horror from Fantasy Flight Games. Now, if you haven't seen my review of Eldritch Horror, I love the game, there is no doubt. So, just as a little preface, this expansion would really, really have to screw up the game in order for me to not like it. But Eldritch Horror is a fantastic cooperative game set in the Cthulhu-verse where you're trying to uh, defeat a great old ancient evil god, the great old ones. Uh, before they awaken by solving all these different mysteries and gaining clues and globe trotting around the world and trying to fight off all these different monsters associated with them and try to solve these mysteries before he wakes up and if he wakes up you can still win but you have to beat him and it's really really tough that is the very very brief synopsis of Eldritch Horror and this new expansion adds a few new things it adds a new great old one to fight Yig the sort of serpent evil god um, together with a whole bunch of new cards associated with him, mystery cards and exploration cards, things like that. Uh, but it also adds new cards for all of the existing uh, ancient old ones from the original game and all the different types of exploration decks. Um, adds a few new epic monsters, things like that. Uh, just a, a, a lot of new stuff added to it. No new characters, but a lot of other extra stuff. So let's go ahead, let's do a brief overview of just what comes in the box, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think about it. All right, let's just go over a brief uh, overview of the stuff that comes in Forsaken Lore, the first expansion for Eldritch Horror. So I'm not going to talk about the rules of the base game Eldritch Horror. If you want to see more about that, you can watch my review or you can go to one of the many tutorial videos or uh, reviews and booklets online. Uh, but this is just to go over the new stuff that comes in the expansion Forsaken Lore. And as you can see, there are just a lot of different cards that come with the game. Most of these cards are actually additions to the existing game. So you have new encounter cards for all the different areas and parts of the world you have new gate cards you have new cards for all the old ancient gods so to speak that were in the base game and along with their all their different mystery cards and the things that you have to fight in order to win the game you have new assets new condition cards you have uh new some new epic monsters and all things like that but probably the centerpiece of the expansion is the new ancient one great old one that you have to fight and that is yig now yig is the serpent god and you know his stat card is basically like all of the other ones and i actually try to be kind of careful here about giving spoilers not that i think it matters that much to this game but you know one of the main complaints about the base game of elder tour is that the variety so if you don't want to know about some of the different stories and items and things like that you should probably turn away at this point because uh, just know that the, the expansion is basically more of the same but just to give you a flavor of what you're in for here uh first off yig has the lowest doom starting uh point of any of the ancient ones which probably by about two i think the next highest one after that is two which you wouldn't think it makes a big difference but it makes a big difference primarily because his mysteries are really hard to solve but uh basically his cultist uh, will give you the possible poison condition, which is one of the new condition cards in this game. Here it is right here. Uh, when your poison and the reckoning comes up, basically you lose a health, which is really awful. If you perform the rest action, you get to flip over and possibly, like all the other conditions, have a shot at remedying it. Uh, but you never know. And so that can be a really nasty thing. Uh, whenever a... Uh, little reckoning symbol comes up you have to spawn more cultists if there's if multi cultists start to flood in a certain area you have to uh lower doom by one which gets even worse uh and of course if you solve three mysteries you're able to win the game but if not by the time doom comes you have to flip him over and fight his uh difficult self and actually this will uh spawn the yig epic monster token onto the board and he is not an easy customer let me tell you and because his doom track is so low it's very probable that you're gonna have to fight yig himself now i will say that his flip condition uh does make it not as difficult seemingly as what happens when some of the other gods awake because you do have some time the number of elders tokens you have to put on his card is actually uh, a little bit high so you have some extra time but not a ton so you want to try to not let that happen here are some of the different mysteries and i'll just show you a couple because i think they're kind of interesting uh the descendants of there's actually two cards the descendants of yig and uh the the winged serpents right here which are actually going to summon more epic monsters there's actually seven epic monsters just with this one expansion um you have the hydra you have the winged serpent which i just mentioned um the doppelganger which is really nasty because basically because he's uh one of those 
monsters which will, on a reckoning, you have to roll a die if you get a one or two. Doom lowers by one, which is really awful for Yig because of how low it already is. Um, the Children of Yig. Um, it's really not fun when you draw the Children of Yig on the first as your first mystery and have no way to deal with her. Um, Zolcha, which is uh, really nasty, very, very high toughness. Uh, toughness equals to the Investigators plus two. And the Yeb here, who is just another one with a really, really high toughness. So you also come with an extra Cultist token because Cultists are a little more plentiful with this Ancient One. Um, so that's some of the different ones here. You also have, much like with Cthulhu and one of the ones I can't remember the name of or pronounce, you have another one of these mystery cards, which is going to require you to solve one of Yig's particular uh, Ancient One mystery cards here. Or uh, So just another extra thing you have to worry about. Like I said, there's new cards for all the other previous encounters, just to give you some flavor. Um, well, actually, that's all right. I'm not even going to read them because, again, I don't want to spoil anything. But they function pretty much just like the encounter cards from the base game including new gate cards. You have new copies of all the different spells that come with the game, um, including, um, I believe, a couple new ones, but, well, maybe not, but uh, just a lot of extra new stuff here. There's Poison Mist. That's a new one because poison is sort of the theme of this expansion. Um, if you pass discard monsters from your space with... Uh, make a... I'm sorry, lower test plus one. If you pass discard monsters from your space with total toughness equal to or less than your test result. So that could be really powerful, but knowing how rolling usually goes in this game maybe not so much and of course you have extra spells with different backs for all the different nasty things that you could happen now i already talked about the poison addition to the conditions in this game but there's also another new one called lost in time and space which basically when you're afflicted with this you are essentially removed entirely from the game um and so when your turn comes you're just off the board your investigators removed you have no effect or influence on the world whatsoever and when your turn comes around and you would have an encounter then you have to flip this over and try to free yourself from whatever is keeping you off the board you have new assets including some really interesting ones you have an elder sign which is going to let you get a reroll. you have uh, a lot of new allies like the mystic bounty hunter and the conspiracy theorist uh, you have enchanted, some really cool items like an Enchanted Blade, the Lucky Ring, which is just awesome, which means every time you have a contest, you, or you have a test, I'm thinking of another game with contests, but every time you have a test, you get to make one reroll as many times as you want per round, once per test. Um, you have the Lantern, which is also really cool. Once per round, once per round you can roll an additional die, so it stacks with the Lucky Ring. And just a lot of cool things, a Syndicate Agent... Uh, another type of ally that gives you a bonus to your strength in combat. And of course, uh, there's nothing that a 45 Colt Revolver can't solve. So lots of new assets as well. Some cool artifacts in the game if you're lucky enough to get them. The Satchel of the Void. You cannot gain a loss in time and space condition. And you also get to manipulate the gate stack. The Sword of Yahalala something or other. Uh, bonuses to your will and your, uh, your strength during combat encounters. If you defeat monsters, you get to gain clues, which is super cool. The Cursed Sphere gives you plus two to all of your skills, but on a Reckoning, you have to roll a die and possibly gain the Curse Condition. Uh, and this one is just kind of gross. The Milk of Shub Nigaroth. Uh, test your will. If you pass, you may spend a Sanity to recover all health and improve your strength twice. But then a monster ambushes you, so there is that. But lots of cool stuff here. I don't want to go too much into the encounter cards because I don't want to spoil anything in case you just want the pure variety there. But new epic monsters, a really tough ancient old one to fight. More variety to all the different decks. That is Forsaken Lore, the expansion to Elder Shore. Okay, as expansions go, this falls into the category of not revolutionary. And maybe not necessary, but a lot of what makes this expansion, whether it's necessary or not, depends on just how much mileage you were able to get out of the base Elder Shore game. And I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you either are interested in Elder Shore or you already own Elder Shore. And I would tell you that one of the few problems that I had with the game, aside from how it's it could be very, very random and you can just have an awful game of it sometimes, but the game sort of lacked variety as you played. After about five games, you've seen almost everything that the cards have to offer, chances are. You've heard every sort of description off the different exploration cards and uh, the different encounter cards. And you've seen all the monsters, and it can it started to feel, you know, it's still fun. The game itself is still sound, but it could get a little played out. Now, what this expansion does, it two two things. We'll we'll cover just um, what I feel this is the most important thing about this expansion, and that's that it adds a ton of variety. There's lots of new cards for every single deck, um, some more than others, but you know, that's cool. I mean, it adds not just to the generic 
ex uh, exploration or encounter decks like the ones for the city wilderness and that and also for the different major cities but it also adds new cards for each of the great old ones from the base game which is very cool new mysteries new uh of their clue cards i forget what they're called mystery cards and things like that so that is really cool and you know this expansion would be great just for that now on top of that it goes ahead and adds this new great old one yig who is very hard <laughs> it's not that it's like over he's overwhelmingly different with his abilities and things like that but his doom tax starts off at 10 which is the lowest out of now five of the ancient gods the ancient old ones and that makes a very big difference <laughs> i played it in two games and he woke up in both games now when he wakes up you do have some time. It doesn't seem like there's as much of a crunch to defeat him as there is with other gods or the other old ones when you when they wake up. But still, um, that is it, it really hard. <laughs> so, but I mean that's cool. I mean I, I you know I would say that I had maybe a fifty percent win percentage with this game before this guy, and if I keep playing against him, it's probably going to drop down much lower. <laughs> but that's fine. I mean, some of his mysteries are really tough. The The first game that we played, we happened to draw the mystery that says, hey, Epic Monsters pops up. Go and defeat that thing before you can move on. Great! <laughs> um, so, that's cool. I mean, if you're looking for more challenge in this game, and I think the game was pretty challenging enough, that's definitely going to help you out. Other than that, I mean, he... I mean, the, the old ones don't feel that much different from one another. I, I think some people might disagree, but... Only as far as difficulty goes, they're sort of the same flavor. Um, what the game is really all about is different encounters and the different experiences that happen to you. And this expansion does add a lot of that. Like I said, it adds new cards to all the encounter decks. There are a lot of new cards just as far as items. There's some really cool items that came out. New new allies, which I love. Allies are one of my favorite things that come out of the asset deck. So that's a cool thing. And they add some different ways that you can use them. Uh, there's new conditions, which could be very, very bad. But still, it's very interesting that there's new ones in each, you know, because like all the different condition cards have different backs to them and different little bits of story, like and which can be sometimes very um, humorous, even as they're absolutely obliterating you and destroying your chances of winning so <laughs> like the dark pact cards but there's new ones of all those dark packs debts new spells uh actually there's only a couple of like totally new things some of them are just extra cards adding to additional ones there is a new uh condition called lost in time and space which one of uh the players in our second game unfortunately got afflicted with and it was just not very fun where you basically are removed from the board unless you meet the condition but it's nice to have that variety of different bad things that can happen to you. So this is where I say that the expansion is both necessary and not and sort of unnecessary. It's necessary if you feel that the original game was sort of played out and you just need more variety to the cards, which I would fall into that camp. Uh, but if you're okay with Elder Tour, you could probably wait on this one. It's not going to, it doesn't revolutionize the game in any way, any way at all. It does not change the fundamental basis of the game, but it's just more of what is good about the game and that's a great thing i don't think this will change anyone's mind about the game either if you didn't like the original because again it's just more of the same it still has some of the same issues uh even if it solves the variety issue you still have the very very random luck factor here where things can just go horribly awry uh because of your dice rolls um and so a lot of people do not like that i mean this is like a quintessential ameritrash game so this isn't going to change a heavy strategic euro gamer's mind but if you like the theme, if you like um, the fun, globe-trotting Indiana Jones nature of it, if you like uh, Marichash games, if you like cooperative games, then hopefully you've already tried Elder's Horror. If you haven't, if you're still on the fence about it, I think that this solves, this expansion will solve one of the problems that you've probably heard other people talk about, and it is definitely a game worth trying, and if you like it, pick up this expansion because I think it's a lot of fun. So. My name is Nick, this has been Board Game Brawl, and I'm reminding you to get out there and game every day and in every way. Take care.